Ever wondered how a scrapyard crane can lift a car as if it were a toy, or how a simple push of a button can ring a doorbell? The magic behind these marvels of everyday life is electromagnetism. To start with the basics, electromagnetism is a branch of physics that deals with the interaction of electric currents and magnetic fields. It's a fundamental force that governs how electricity and magnetism interact with each other. Take a wire carrying an electric current, for instance. Danish physicist Hans Christian Oersted discovered that a compass needle placed near this wire would be deflected due to a magnetic field. This observation led to the conclusion that an electric current must produce a magnetic field. The strength of this magnetic field depends on the intensity of the current and the distance from the wire. But how do we determine the direction of this magnetic field? This is where the right-hand rule comes in handy. Picture this. If you point your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers will naturally curl around the wire in the direction of the magnetic field. Now what if the current passes through a ring? The right-hand rule evolves a bit here. In this scenario your thumb points to the magnetic field direction in the center of the ring, and your fingers follow the current through the ring. This brings us to the solenoid, which is essentially a coil of wire with a current running through it. Like the ring, the right-hand rule applies here too, but with a twist. Your thumb now points to the north pole inside the solenoid. Now that we've covered the basics of electromagnetism, let's put your knowledge to the test. Can you tell which rule determines the direction of the magnetic field in a wire-carrying current? Is it A, the left-hand rule, B, the right-hand rule, or C, the thumb rule? Take a moment to think about it. If you said B, the right-hand rule, then you're absolutely correct. The direction of the magnetic field is determined by the right-hand rule, where your thumb points in the direction of the current and your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Well done if you got that right. If not, don't worry, we'll continue to explore and understand more about electromagnetism in the next scene. Stay tuned. To wrap up this scene, let's revisit the question once more. What rule determines the direction of the magnetic field in a wire-carrying current? Moving on to a more complex application of electromagnetism, the cathode ray tube or CRT television. Here, an image is created on the screen by beams of electrons striking the red, green, and blue phosphors on the screen. This interaction is governed by the principles of electromagnetism. All right, let's test your understanding with another question. Remember our discussion on the cathode ray tube television? So, the question remains, what creates an image on a CRT television screen? Is it A, beams of protons, B, beams of electrons, or C, beams of neutrons? And, if you said B of electrons, you're absolutely right. Those tiny particles are responsible for the vivid colors that you see on the television screen. Good job if you got it right, and if not, no worries. Keep learning and keep exploring. As we move on to our conclusion, let's ponder once more. What creates an image on a CRT television screen? In summary, electromagnetism is an essential concept that influences many aspects of our everyday life, from doorbells to scrapyard cranes and even the television screens. It's a fascinating field of study that combines the principles of electricity and magnetism, providing us with countless applications that make our lives easier. Voice over. Now let's test your retention with a final question. What does electromagnetism combine? Is it A. Principles of heat and light, B. Principles of sound and light, or C. Principles of electricity and magnetism? Take a moment to think about it. Five seconds of silence. If you said C. Principles of electricity and magnetism, you're absolutely correct. Well done. This wraps up our journey into the fascinating world of electromagnetism. Before we end, let's add an extra question for you to ponder on. What does electromagnetism combine? Stay curious, keep learning and remember, science is all around us. Many experiments found that the magnetic fields exert a magnetic force on moving charged particles. Force is greatest when the movement is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Force is zero when the particle moves along the field lines. Force is in between these values for other directions. When the movement is perpendicular, the magnetic force is, where Q is the charge, V is the velocity, and B is the magnetic field strength. And F, B, and V are all vector quantity, so no need to substitute the sign of any quantity because the sign point to the direction. But in this case, we use again new right-hand rule to determine the direction. But in this case, the fingers refer to the magnetic field direction, your thumb points the velocity direction, and the hand palm refers to the direction of force for the positive charge. If the charge is negative, take the opposite direction, or use your left hand rule as well. Voice over. As we move further into our journey of electromagnetism, let's pause for a moment and test your understanding of what we've just learned in Chapter 7. Moving charge in the external magnetic field. Our first question is, 
What happens when a charge moves in an external magnetic field? Your options are as follows. A. It experiences a force. B. It experiences a potential difference. C. It experiences a current. Take a moment to think about it. Remember, the magnetic field exerts a force on moving charged particles. If you chose option A, you are correct. A moving charge in an external magnetic field experiences a force. The magnitude of this force is greatest when the movement is perpendicular to the magnetic field and zero when the particle moves along the field lines. The direction of the force is determined by the right-hand rule. Great job if you got it right. If not, don't worry. Remember, the path to mastery is paved with trials and errors. Keep learning and keep exploring. Before going forward to the next idea, search about the relation between magnetic force and centripetal force. We're now ready to move on to the next scene. Magnetic forces also exist on the moving charges in current carrying wires. The right-hand rule too is used to determine the direction, as shown in the diagram. The magnitude of the force is as follows, and the same right-hand rule is applied as well. All right, everyone. Now that we've explored the interesting dynamics of a current carrying wire in an external magnetic field, it's time to test what you've learned. Let's begin with a simple question. What happens when a current carrying wire is placed in an external magnetic field? 1. Nothing happens because the magnetic field is external. 1. The current in the wire changes due to the influence of the magnetic field. 1. The wire experiences a force due to the magnetic field. 1. Both the wire and the magnetic field disappear. Now let's analyze each option. Option 1. This is incorrect. The magnetic field, though external, does have an effect on the current carrying wire. Option 2. This is partially true. The current in the wire does not change but the magnetic field does impact the wire itself. Option 3. This is the correct answer. The wire experiences a force due to the magnetic field. Option 4. This is not true. Neither the wire nor the magnetic field disappear. So if you picked option 3, great job. You've understood the concept. If not, don't worry. Remember the path to mastery is paved with trials and errors. Keep learning and keep exploring. We're now ready to move on to the next scene. 